when surveying tutoring channel where we get to learn construction especially when surveying skills in a way that is more of interest to you and uh, keeps everything to be of a better understanding over the past five now five sessions we've been doing uh, preparation of bills of quantities step by step in a manner that it's uh, easier to understand and today we'll continue with the same course for what we've done so far the videos are attached are going to be attached at the description of this very channel so for the new viewers do not worry about anything because you've not missed you'll just get the links under the descriptions and uh, go through them then you'll be able to catch up with us today we are going straight to doing um, more things uh, concerning the substructures for what we've done so far we've done quite some items of course not so much because we are moving to the items step by step until we complete them i want to say uh, thank you so much for those uh, for those uh, esteemed viewers or uh, members of this channel who keep understanding and interacting as well because this is the channel that is going to make you even understand what you need to understand in terms of conserving so so much so thank you very much new viewers worry no more because this is the channel where you belong and you're going to understand exactly what you need for we move on uh we've done the preliminaries we started the builders work the section of the builders work that is section two and uh, what we need to know now we've done the excavations uh, we've done a mean site clearance and uh, we titled it excavations so the number of items that are uh, concerned or under the excavations are going to be included within this particular particular point there is something that we missed out and i need to correct it right away uh, that is uh, concerning uh, let me just make uh, this uh, uh, very tab so that you are able to see the whole of the excel that is right so that you can see how we make our edits and uh, match things together all right so the what i'm uh, saying that we missed out is uh, mentioning here that we need this to be all provisional i will reiterate that the meaning of uh, all provisional means that whatever you have at the substructures level is subject to change especially at the implementation stage of the project and that is why you need to mention it there so at the time that uh, the project is going to be implemented you can uh, find there is a, va a variation in one point or another for items under the substructures works so, so what we do uh, we've done the site clearance and of course this is the drawing that uh, we are using so for this drawing i'm just using a basic pdf reader that you can access anywhere uh, locally available it's not any other sophisticated software that you might uh, wonder to be having or you might be worried that you don't have so we did uh, site clearance we got the area just by the side using the excel okay so the item b is uh, what we cover next and item b we like to do bulk excavation so the assumption here actually this is now the existing condition of this particular site it's a black cotton soil and a black cotton soil doesn't uh, support much of uh, structural uh, stability of um, structures and therefore it needs to be taken off the site therefore we do what we call bulk or if you like you can call it mass excavation from our list where we did our our items the substructure items and how they should be done when you look at uh, uh, there is uh, this is item number four of the standard methods of measurements you are able to see that you should do it in cubic meters and of course in stages of 1.5 1.5 meters depth okay once you've known those items yes i mentioned that we'll keep on uh, revisiting these rules until we are very very much okay with all of them so it should be done in cubic meters so that is the unit which you are going to put at the column of the unit right so we go next then we put up our description all right then we state uh, bulk uh, bulk excavation there is a typo there so i need to correct that yeah so this is a bulk excavation of course to reduce to reduce levels 
depth. So we'll start with the first stage. Being that we should be measuring in stages of 1.5 means that you can start with the first stage. So the first stage is depth not exceeding 1.50 meters. Sorry, deep. Right? Of course, in instances where you have uh, black cotton soil that needs to be reduced in terms of the levels, then uh, normally there is no need of doing a uh, vegetable soil because the assumption is once you've cleared that site, the whole of that site doesn't have much of uh, any any soil that is a product that can be used somewhere else in terms of uh, the vegetable uh, just landscaping generally. So in that case, what you'll do, you just go straight to bulk excavation. So that is uh, what we are measuring now. So the description I've put up, uh, you're wondering where you'll uh, come up with that. Normally, I've stated this over and over again. I'll just repeat that from the standard methods of measurements, this is where you get how to beef, beef up your descriptions. And what that means is that there, there are those key items that have been given in the standard methods of measurements. Those key items are going to help you make up the major component of what your description should be constituted of. And therefore, you don't need to worry because when you have that reference book, and of course, from the item that I'm giving you, then you don't need to rely on any other made up template of bills of quantities. If you don't have none, you can make up yours to be a very good document without any without any problem. So we've stated uh, bulk excavation to reduce levels, depth not exceeding 1.50 meters deep. All right. So in this case, we are not going to include now uh, uh, the cutting away because that is now going to be measured as a different item. If you need to, if you need to include here also because now this is a being a black cotton soil, then the all of it needs to be disposed of the site. So those are two different items, and this, we are just going to measure that as an item, the disposal as an item, in just a few minutes to come, in a moment to come, right? So here we just concerned about the bulk excavation on its own. That description is overlapping, so as usual, we do what we call wrapping up the text. So when you want to wrap that text, it's somewhere here on the alignment, then you wrap it that way so that it fits within that column. So we need here to be doing in cubic meters, right? Then the next step is for us to get that uh, particular volume, okay? So to avoid confusion, I can see these uh, items that we did for the site clearance are overlapping into this item, okay? So instead what you can do, you can drag this up so that it gives you that space. You can just move them up there, okay? So when you do that, then you have a space here where you can do your volume for the excavations. So as usual, we are presenting the drawing alongside what we are, we are measuring so that you are able to see. Our length here, we got it to be 12.4. When I just zoom in properly, you are able to see the 12.4 meters for the length which we used and also a 9.2 for the width which we, are, we also used. So those ones are already here. So what we need to do, because we have done the first stage, so the length is going to be the same the 12.4 that is the length okay and then uh, of course you can just drag it that way if you drag it it's copying the same formula just to the side all right then we need to now inc include now depth for uh, depth of our depth of our excavation so here we are going to have three dimensions so this is the length width and a depth so a depth that we're going to use is 1.5 okay just by the side because i want everything within the screen so that you are able to see them properly and be able to compute them by yourself of any other drawing that you might have so excel gives you the allowance of doing your your multiplications there there and then so it's a very very interesting software as long as you know how to maneuver it all right so we have a 12.4 9.2, 1.5 as the depth, and then we get the volume as a product of those three items, so those three dimensions. So the volume that we have is 172. Okay, so we have 172 cubic meters for the first stage of excavations. All right, 
so in this site the amount of the black cotton soil is uh, massive it's quite big and of course this being a, an apartment of about um, uh, five floors five story apartment and therefore you'd expect that we have some uh, of course you can see the even the bases are quite big there are even some uh, double columns within one base so we'd expect that uh, we have the depth going quite deeper and therefore there is another an additional stage of excavation okay so the first stage is the 1.5 not exceeding 1.5 meter, uh, meters deep then we go to the next stage next stage you can always just copy that and then you paste control c control v okay and then this is item c item c you will uh, do you can uh, talk about detour so these are some of the abbreviations which we learned in our uh, preceding uh, preceding sessions if you talk about detour means uh, as before described all right okay so you just you refer to the first uh, the first part of that description up to where you are uh, you get the the comma all right then depth not exceeding in this stage now we are going to talk about uh, depth exceeding because now this is where the description is different depth exceeding so uh, we've started with the other one was not exceeding 1.5 1.5 so it means the, the the next stage is one that is exceeding 1.5 meters deep but not but not exceeding 3.0 meters deep all right so that is basically what the stage the 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 measurements in terms of the stages for excavation means it means that the first stage you refer to it as the one that is not exceeding 1.5 meters deep then now the next stage has now exceeded 1.5 meters deep but is not exceeding 3 meter because now that is the range of the other set of 1.5 meters deep of excavation then uh, straight away as usual we get to know now what is that given volume that we are talking about so the length and the width are going to remain the same in this in this manner okay but then what is going to change is uh, the depth so we are uh, we are projecting that we are doing a depth of about two meters so we've factored in the first 1.5 in the first stage now here we are going to do a difference of the difference of uh, whatever is remaining so we have two meters then uh, what is left is now 0 0.5 0 0.5 meters and therefore our volume for excavation in that stage is uh, 50 7.4 and as usual we step it up and we have 58 cubic cubic meters okay so at that stage we've done we've dealt with the excavations we've dealt with the site clearance we've dealt with the bulk excavation and we've also dealt with what we call actually bulk excavation and you've also seen how we handle uh, that concept of stages of the excavation then we go straight to uh, next item that we should cover so uh, in such in such instances uh, you might find that uh, especially in matters that you need uh, one level uh, set of excavation of course you always do your excavation until you reach that farm base or the farm grounds that is able to support your foundations all right but then in some instances you might find that you will need to dig up a bit of a portion of a rock in the sense that you might find that uh, uh, for, for instance you might find that the characteristics of that particular soil is varying maybe from one corner to the other but then in instance that you need a uh, slightly uh, more leveled uh, ground you might find that at the one corner of the structure rock is even at uh, one meter so what do you do in that instance because you realize that you're going to have a very very shorter in terms of depth in terms of uh, the foundations items like maybe columns and therefore the engineer might advise that you do some a little more excavations even within that rock so in that case you will you are going to provide uh, you are going to provide some uh, depth of rock that uh, should be an average depth of rock so this is majorly based on assumption because you are not sure of how exactly these uh, rock characteristics of this rock is varying from one point to the other 
and also in terms of the size that you have from one point to the other all right so what in short i mean is that you provide for what you call extra over extra over excavations all right for rock as usual i like to uh, explain these bits one by one as we move on extra over means that you have done it somewhere else and that is why we have measured now fully because we are, we were anticipating to do two meters from the start and we've captured the two meters in the normal ordinary excavations but then now we are not going we are not ex we are not anticipating to be going even beyond the two meters so within the two meters that we've done is what we are also providing for some rock so these are cubic meters okay so within that we are going to allow for uh, something like uh, for instance 0 0.5 on average for rock so we'll do rock also 0 0.5 so in that case our volume is uh, 50 also 58 all right so once our excavations are done then there are normally items and these items are crucial and they need to be uh, also covered within uh, the excavations and those items we are talking about are uh, planking and strutting and also dewatering all right especially for excavations of uh, such extent you might encounter water and how do you pro how do you deal with that and because you've also gone uh, quite um, quite two meters is quite deep you also need to protect the sides of excavations by what you call planking and strutting so those provisions need to be covered by you as a coin surveyor in terms of in terms of costing right so or uh, you will talk about allow allow for the watering by all means to the site all right and planking planking and strutting so these are items and actually the reason it's called an item is that you are not going to there is no way that you are going to measure it in terms of figures okay so if you can't measure it in terms of figures then uh, these are now left as items so that is uh, what i mean you measure them as items and of course now of essence is uh, the provision of that figure in terms of an amount that you're going to allow for that uh, particular item so depending on your analysis you as a coin surveyor you are always at liberty to decide maybe give it 30,000 or 50,000 and so on so in as long as and a better way of uh, deciding how you are going to do this is uh, for by you being able to know that total these excavations are going to be uh, going on for say one month or say one week or two weeks and then you will be able to uh, examine that uh, in one day for instance if i'm using a pump to pump out the water out of the site how much does that pumping cost per day All right so if it's going to cost you like uh, let me say uh it's going to cost you like five thousand uh, shillings per day then uh five thousand shillings and then you project that these excavations under under optimal working conditions then they should take us two weeks so two weeks times that five thousand then you get now a possible amount that you can give for uh for the provision for the watering of the site and of course now basically now supporting all the planking and strutting which is also the supporting the sides of excavation you are going to provide for some timbering and also now the fundis or the 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 special guy the specialist guys who are going to help you erect those uh, timbering to help support the sides of excavations so that is uh, basically an insight on how to go about uh, you pricing the dewatering and also the planking and strutting so that is a uh, well said and that should be enough for our excavations then we'll be going straight into the next item which is uh, now uh, the fillings okay so of course after you've done your excavations then we do what we call uh, fillings for for the excavations or the excavated parts 
Right, so we move straight to what we call filling and uh, disposal. For the filling and uh, disposal, that is uh, what we do next. So there are two types of uh, filling here and the disposal. First one is called uh, filling. Okay, that is underlined. Then you can also underline this one. So this is now item F. The first type of the dis of uh, of filling is now filling of the excavated materials, and because owing to the characteristic of this type of soil, we are now only going to backfill with the excavated materials only to the external sides of the foundations. All right? We are not going to return all any of the items that we we've, we've uh, done for the bulk excavations within, and that is just for the uh, structural stability purposes of the structure. Okay. So we'll do we'll do a return a return fill and RAM of excavated materials to external external sides of foundations. So this is the only part where we are going to do the, the return fill and RAM uh, for the excavated materials to the external sites so it means for what we've got uh, for what we've uh, calculated in terms of uh, in terms of the materials that we've calculated we've uh, cal we've uh, excavated from within the within the the, the the plan or the the foundations we are going to do uh, the external uh, external length okay which uh, let me just uh, make this to be wrapped so that we continue it with it properly and of course this is done in cubic meters so what we'll do i'll draw a line which is going to give a demarcation of course to the faces external faces of uh, these uh, what we call uh, these are given plan external faces of the columns so that we have a length that is to the outside and of course that length we are now going to uh, we are now going to give an allowance of uh, about 200 in thickness okay from the external faces so what i'll do i'll just uh, make a drawing here okay so from that drawing you are going to get the length externally and even without that drawing you have the 12.4 and the 12.4 is what we took to be on the extreme extreme edges of our foundation a uh, 12.4 i mean 12 12.4 at the length and 9.2 at the width. So those are the the two external dimensions that we have. So we can still use those two dimensions. 12.4. Okay. So uh, in this case we have, of course, 12.4 is the length. So we then we don't even have to repeat it there. And then we add to this. Okay. So if you do this and then we multiply by 2, the summation of that by 2, that should give us basically the perimeter externally. Okay? But then you see it's now perimeter to the very, very immediate edges of, of our columns. But then now you need a slightly a center line to the slightly external. Of course, in this point, our foundations, our foundations here, are, it's uh, 600 okay so this particular wall of course this one here is for the perimeter uh, perimeter walling okay but then it's uh typical to what we have because even here the structures are 200 okay 200 in terms of uh, in terms of the external uh, the thickness for that external external line of uh, of uh, columns all right so even what we have here uh, this is a uh, these are column of this is for the boundary we have a boundary wall to the external bit okay but then that is going to be dealt with as an external work so what we are dealing with here is within the building and within this building this uh, particular item here it's 200 and uh, let's just confirm what uh, we are talking about okay this is another another section and uh, from this section you can see our columns are 200 in thickness okay so the columns that we have are 200 
so we get back to our plan that is here and it's at the center okay these are our bases but then what we have what we need in terms of in terms of the length we need to uh, set it to the side by 200 okay and the reason is if you take for instance at uh, at uh, grid b grid b1 our wall here is 200 millimeters in thickness okay assume to be sitting at the center at the center of what we call uh, the center of of the trench okay of course we didn't do the trench in uh, itself because we have to, we did what we call mass excavation so in real sense this type of uh, this type of uh, construction the trenches i mean the 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 the, the walling the foundation walls and even these bases will be done on a on a lower ground we didn't do we didn't do independent or isolated bases and the trenches on its own okay so that is why it's uh, we didn't do we didn't do the trenches and also bases for these uh, particular uh, particular excavations so what we have we have the length to the external bit uh, length we have the g9 and the h9 so we multiply that by two to get the external perimeter and therefore for us to adjust it to have the length to the external part to give us now like a center line that we are going to do the the back filling then what we do we have those two dimensions then times two and then we are going to take uh, 0 0.2 times a half which is 0 0.5 then times two times four i would repeat the explanation or the logic behind this it's called rule of distance moved and it says at every corner for instance, in this case, we have uh, these of our building. When you go to architectural plan, you will notice it. But at this point, when we have, when we have uh, what we call the foundation layout, you are not able to see this. Uh, I mean, uh, you are not able to see the outline of what we call. You can call it the slab, or you can call it that uh, perfect rectangle for this uh, type of type of foundation. So instead. What we are doing, we are uh, what we are doing. We've adjusted on every corner. For instance, when you pick on uh, B1, okay. When you pick on uh, no, let's pick on uh, yeah this one at the corner, okay. This is a particular base. So at this particular base, what you have is uh, us extending. Yeah, that is why I needed to draw uh, so that I explain it better. At this particular point, we have moving that way. Okay. Actually, let me just make it to the top here. And then here. Okay. So we need to backfill in this area. So we are going to go, that is 200 going upwards and also. 200 going this way so we need the center of it somewhere at this point because we need that center at that particular place so we are going to add from what we have the 200 was at the face of this uh, particular column so we need to add half half of the 200 and that is why we had 200 is the full full uh, thickness of uh, what we need then we multiply by 0 0.5 now half going uh going to the uh, to the right and also another half going upwards okay so that is why we need we need half of the wall this way and also half of the wall going that way so yeah it, for, for even further explanations there are more videos that we did uh, concerning the rule of distance moved to calculate the center line so that is uh, what uh, we are explaining here so we've done the G9, I mean uh, the length plus the width, and then we've add, uh, adjusted. This is now 0 0.2 times half, then times two times four corners. Four corners is uh, the presumed uh, presumed uh, maximum number of columns, dip, uh, I mean edges, despite what you have in terms of uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the plan. Of course, when you get to see uh, this uh, particular plan, you are going to appreciate the fact that we have four corners okay going upwards in terms of uh, in terms of the rest of the uh, the rest of the plants for the slabs and also even the architectural 
for the for the number of uh, the number of uh, what you have in terms of in terms of the slab going upwards consistently from uh, slab first floor second floor until the very last the very last floor all right so we have that uh, that the length is now going to be we are going to use is uh, 44 so for us to get the volume this is now the length 44 times the width that we are going to use is 0 0.2 okay that is to the external side the the whole thickness of uh, that particular uh, that particular particular sides of the foundation and then the depth that we should use we need to now use a depth of uh, two meters okay we did remember we did 1.5 at the first stage and we also did another 0 point 0 0.5 okay so we have a total depth that we should be doing of uh, 17.6 so that is uh, we'll return 18 cubic meters of excavated materials back to the external sites of uh, the excavations okay all right so uh, the other item this is f then we do g so the other items we are going to uh, we're now going to import imported backfilling okay so we'll do imp uh, imported imported maram right we can state imported maram filling okay so these ones are going to be returned to the point where we excavated or we removed now the rest of the of uh, the black cotton uh, black cotton soil all of it is going to be returned of course only after you've built your columns and uh, a few foundation strip walling that you can see at this point and also of course all the columns at large so in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, the imported maram filling. So this is uh, normally for you to get, because now what is of essence here is for you to uh, determine the depth that you're going to use. So you can always do a mix of uh, maram and also a mix of a mix of uh, hardcore. Okay. So you can decide, maybe you do maram to be one meter and then uh, the rest of uh, the item that you have, maybe 800 millimeters of hardcore and uh, one meter of uh, of uh, what you call uh, the maram so that you get a combined total a combined total uh, volume that should be backfilled so what we'll do the total that we we did the total we did was uh, two meters okay so for the two meters you just balance between the two okay you can have a higher volume for the maram okay of course the rest of the items in terms of the length and the width are going to remain the same so you'll just use these ones that we have here that is um, zero that was the length and then we multiply by the the width so we like to do a maram of 1.2 meters and then the other 0 0.8 to be on hardcore hardcore filling okay so in this case we have a total of 100 this is also cubic meters so this is 130 137 cubic meters okay in terms of in terms of uh, maram then we'll do also uh, this is now item h we'll do imported hardcore hardcore filling okay so when we've done, uh, if we've done the, the first part, we've done 1.2 and the total that we did was 2 meters. So what is remaining is uh, basically is basically uh, 0 0.8. So we'll repeat the same, but then with now a depth of uh, 0 0.8. So the length that we had times uh, the depth, no, that is the width, and then a depth of 0 .0, 0 0.8 meters. Okay, so in this case we have a total of this is now cubic meters and we have a total of 92 cubic meters of hardcore so this is uh, a unique type of uh, of uh, of uh, of development because in this case we have we've encountered a unique characteristics of of uh, black cotton soil which should be taken out fully out of the site but in instances where you have um, a maram type of uh, soil 
then that is already firm enough so maybe just do a small excavation then you get to soil i, I mean get to rock which is firm enough so you want to be doing all this type of of uh, filling you don't feel much but instead instead you just uh, do what we call uh, just after you've done the normal excavations and then you will do you won't even be having to do items like uh, ground beams and also the filling in the, this case but instead you just have a hardcore bed and the hardcore bed even as we we, we had uh, discussed earlier should be done in what we call uh, in uh, square meters especially if it's not more than 300 but then in this case we are doing what we call filling because so for the filling they're done in cubic meters and we are filling fully what we have excavated okay all right so that is uh what we have done in this particular part so we have imported maram filling then we have also imported hardcore bed and of course under the filling we can just deal with it fully so with that we can also talk about uh, feeling for uh, stone dust uh, stone dust stone dust to uh, hardcore hardcore surfaces all right so we just uh, fill in terms of uh, fill using the stone dust uh, to all the areas of of uh, the hardcore surfaces so this is in uh, square meters so you write the unit and uh, the area that we are going to use is the same same area that we had talked about so we don't uh, we are not going to we are not going to calculate another area so that is 100 and uh, 115 okay so that is 115 no that is not what i want okay so this one is in uh, square meters right so you can always maybe talk about the thickness so 50 millimeters thick okay stone dust stone dust blinding to hardcore surfaces so you already have that properly described and then the unit has been stated square meters and then the area you just do it the area where you've done your hardcore that that uh, very area without having to go much into other items all right so the very very I last item here that we're doing hi then this is item j the very last item we are also going to take note of is now disposal okay so we talk about dispose of the site surplus excavated materials so these are quite unique because all the black cotton soil and are considered surplus because except for to used to the back to back filling of the external sites of the foundations so whatever is in uh, is in excess are considered surplus and are going to be disposed of the site okay so this is a uh, quite an important aspect because you notice that disposing of all these items is going to attract an impressive cost to this uh, project so you need not to overlook it in any way it's going to be uh, done so this is uh, in cubic meters okay and how do you now dispose it or how do you uh, how do you measure this okay so all the items that are considered with what's going to be surplus is within what we done we've done so what you'll do equal to first of all clearance that is not anything to be disposed we did the first bulk of excavation the first stage the 1.5 so you'll take that that is the first stage and then with the the second stage is also going to be uh, disposed okay of course now the rocks uh, the unit that are going to give uh, the unit for uh, the, the the i mean the rate that are going to apply for the rocks is going to allow for uh, it's excavation and also disposal okay but then the other black cotton we've added the two but then now we need to subtract okay so we need to subtract all these all these two were excavated okay then we have a return fill and ram 
So this is the, the only part that is going to be subtracted from what we have for the two. Of course, these other ones have been imported. So you take the total excavated material minus what we have as backfilling. Okay, so the backfilling. So we are only going to subtract this uh, particular uh, volume, which is uh, 18 cubic, 18 cubic meters. <coughs> so we subtract uh, what we have. We add the two, the total excavated materials, and then we subtract uh, the return fill and ram, which is the only item that is going to be reused from the total excavated material. Okay. So we subtract uh, that particular cell. So the disposal, uh, disposal, uh, dispose of the site surplus excavated materials, and the total volume is going to be 212 cubic meters. So that is bring, uh, that brings us to the end of our excavations and also filling and disposal. So what should uh, come next is uh, straight away uh, to be uh, concrete, concrete works. Okay. So that is uh, what we are uh, eagerly waiting for in our next session. That, that is what you should expect in our next uh, coverage of, um, of the videos. So that brings us to the end of our session today. And I want to thank you very much for being a member of this channel and watching up to this point. And I'm quite confident that it proved to be worthwhile. Please subscribe before you leave because I'm sure that you won't want to miss any upcoming videos thank you very much have a great time bye bye